I just have to put it on a little saucer and we are good. Go. Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Caitlin from Leave Me Alone Plants. And as you probably know from the title of this video, today I will be planting myself a bountiful harvest in a container that will hopefully be small enough that I can deceive my boyfriend into even knowing that there is another plant in this house. Now this is a little bit of a departure from our normal house plantery type videos that I do around here, but I figured it would be a fun little way to mix it up and I had to do this anyway, so why not let the camera roll? For me personally, these are the type of videos that I like to just binge watch in bed on like a Saturday afternoon. So if you're weird like me, then grab a cup of Crystal Light or coffee or tea or whatever the kids are drinking these days and let's get into it. So I have all my supplies laid out here. Actually, that's a lie. I need my worm castings. Give me one second. Okay, now we really have all our supplies. So as I had mentioned, I have this special planter, which actually stacks up. Um, you can kind of just twist it on an angle like this. And I can never quite find the place where it goes in, but um, once you find it, it kind of just clicks in there. And then they all nest on top of each other. So. As you can see from the top down, each one of these pods is going to be an individual section for a plant and um, it has holes in the bottom, drainage holes, so that you can um, make sure that the water is draining through and it just is an easy way to grow things like herbs or um, you know other plants that don't have super extensive root systems on a small patio like I have. I'm in that apartment living life, so listen, we don't got room for a giant ass garden around here. We gotta make do with what we got which is this pot. If you are also an apartment dweller like myself and you are interested in this pot, I will drop it in the link down below as long as well as everything else that I'm using here except for, I guess, the plants um, because I don't necessarily know that you can get those on Amazon. Maybe you can. If you can, I'll link those there too. So I'm going to start out and I'm just going to build um, the first tier of this. And the great thing about these planters is that you can build as many or as few tiers as you want. So um, you might not be able to see it, but back here I have my lovely gigantic bucket of soil um, that I will be using as our donor soil today for this pot. And we're just gonna start out uh, by backfilling some of this empty space in here. I guess I'm gonna take this off first. See, these are the type of videos that I film out in the open um, in my household when my boyfriend is gone. He is out on a walk right now, so hopefully we can finish this uh, extravagant little project before he gets back because I don't think he uh, loves the idea of me gardening at our kitchen table, but you know, sometimes we gotta make sacrifices in our relationship. Okay, so I don't want to go too crazy over flooring this. Um, because obviously when you pull these plants out, there is going to be dirt in there, so we want to give them uh, some room. And I am just going in with a little bit of worm castings in the soil for um, a little nutrient boost right off the bat. Uh, I do find that edible plants tend to be a little heavier of feeders than my house plants, which I guess makes sense. So we will just mix this in. Um, if you're not familiar with worm castings, it is a fancy way of saying worm poop, and basically it's just very um, nutrient rich for your plants to kind of give them a natural boost as opposed to using more of a synthetic fertilizer. And um, I'm sure somebody's going to comment and be like, oh my god, you're using worm poop and you're gonna eat those? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but actually um, in nature there are worms in the soil and they just poop in there uh, without any human intervention. So, uh, completely natural. I, of course, opt for the organic worm poop because, uh, you know, I don't want any extra BS added to my worm droppings. Okay, so we will put this second layer back on here. And um, first crop that I have right here, actually not an herb, these are dinosaur kale. So, um, I love eating salads, one of my favorite things to eat. Actually, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a total lie. It's not one of my favorite things, but I have been eating them more lately because I'm trying to be healthy, okay? Um, 
but I figured we would get some dinosaur kale. I like adding it to my juice and just my salad. So fun little addition that we will put in here. Now all my plants I have today have these little tags in them that I'm just going to keep um, for reference so that I know what plant is what and I am not mistakenly harvesting something that it is not. If you uh, don't have these little tags, they don't come with your plants for some reason, then I will link those down below as well. But there are little tags that you can buy on Amazon and hand label them, which I might do after the bath because personally, these aren't that cute and you know, we're trying to be aesthetic over here. Okay, last time I promise I am going to take this off one more time. I keep needing more dirt in here than I anticipated, so um, we're just going to completely fill this out and then we will go back in with the top layer. I'm kind of curious, comment in um, the comment section down below if you are a plant person, if you are just like a houseplant person, if you kind of came from the world of edibles, if that's how you stumbled upon this video, like what kind of plants do you like to grow? Because I am um, somebody who's always been more of a houseplant person myself, but recently I have kind of been getting interested in the whole realm of edibles, so um, kind of beginning that journey and I'm sure over the course of this video since I am still a little new to this side of plants I'll probably either do or say something that is uh, faux pas in the edible plant community so if that is the case you know come on cut your girl some credit because we're all just learning around here okay I'm like trying to be fancy with the shovel but we're just gonna start going on with our hands because this is taking too long okay okay and I guess in theory, if you were like short on soil, you don't have to fill this middle section. Um, but I want to because that way if the roots get wild and crazy in here, then they can kind of grow out to that middle section and they have uh, room to grow. Now conversely, what you could also probably do, um, I didn't think of until now, is if you have um, small enough pots, I can get one of these out of this tray over here, um, then you can probably drop them in down inside the tray itself. You don't even have to take them out. My pots are too big, but um, like I said, I guess it'll just kind of depend on what you got going on. Okay, sweet. We got our first layer and finally, what's going on with the second tray? Hopefully I don't kill any of these plants in the process. All right, oh shit. All right, cool. Got that on and everything is looking good. Now I am kind of just putting um, in these first couple layers the same plants with each other, but of course you can mix it up and get it as kooky and crazy as you want with these layers. Or conversely, you could probably even use this little planter for house plants. Honestly, I might have to do this with a second one of these. I can imagine like a beautiful one of these just full of calathea, just like overflowing. Oh my God, I'm like already excited. <laughs> We're gonna have to try it. As per usual, I am literally getting dirt everywhere, so don't mind me. All right, we are gonna go in with the rest of these dinosaur kale and then um, on the rest of this tier, we have some spinach that I will be putting on in there. Give me one second, I'm just gonna change this camera angle so I can stand up and do this. Haha, -ha, here we go. Getting the spinach in over here. Now, I know that I am turning into an old person because like all the fruits and vegetables that like as a kid I thought were absolutely repulsive, I now think are really good. So um, spinach is definitely one of those. I remember as a kid literally being disgusted by spinach and kale, but that's what happens when you get old like me. Now personally, when I'm taking um, these plants out of their little shell over here, hold them up so that you can see. Fine, let me get closer. Okay, so. If you see this over here, hopefully it's not blown out. You can see that those roots are a little bit root bound and kind of have that, have that root memory on there. So I do like to go in and just break those up a little bit. So as they um, kind of grow more in this new setting, they will hopefully spread out and a little bit bigger and give me a bigger plant. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay, we are just moving right along here and going on to step number three. We might have to like break this up into two separate stacks and add them at the end so that I can see at the top of this because 
to be completely frank with you, I am just not that tall. So I probably should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but um, I just counted out all the plants I had to figure out how I could put these in here to have an even number in all my tiers uh, without overcrowding it. So uh, <laughs> step number one, do that in the beginning. Okay, cool. So we just fast forwarded a little bit. Um, this is getting too tall for me to all do in one stack. So I will put this up here for your viewing pleasure. And now we will move along to our next layers. Okay, so in what will be layer number four, we are starting out with a traditional um, sage. Now, honestly, I never use sage when I'm cooking. I don't even know like what type of dishes you do when it does use sage in, but uh, I guess I'll have to figure it out. Honestly, I was really just drawn to this plant. It has these beautiful kind of like bumpy looking leaves if you've never seen sage in real life before. So I um, really was just delighted with that. And we will be going in with sweet basil. To be completely honest with you, I've killed so many basil plants in my life. They're a little difficult to care for, so uh, we'll kind of see how that goes. Maybe a little touch and go. Um, and I have an upright rosemary that we will be going in with on this next layer. And finally, we will end it off with some, with some French lavender. I took like four years of French, but it would be beyond me if I knew how to say lavender in French. It's, it's probably just like le lavender. <laughs> I know that's wrong, so <laughs> please somebody correct me down in the comments below. These herbs are really just filling my apartment with um, quite the aroma of, uh, I mean, I guess herbs, but uh, there's so many different varieties of them that I'm not really sure how to feel about it. It's not necessarily like good, but it's not really bad either. Um, so yeah. By the way, if you guys live here in Arizona, I got all these plants at uh, summer winds on Tatum that is well actually maybe it's not on Tatum, but it's somewhere around Tatum uh, But that is one of my favorite local nurseries and they always have um, a ton of vegetable plants, which I typically graze past but uh, When I was there yesterday, I figured we'd take a little look ski around and uh, I was Pretty impressed to find that they had a really nice selection. Damn look at the roots on this rosemary you guys like what? So good Hashtag root porn. The hashtag actually makes me like super uncomfortable for some reason, just saying. Okay, and down to our fifth and final layer. Up in this guy, we are going to have some locally grown Mrs. Burns lemon basil. I don't know who Mrs. Burns is, but hopefully that is some nice lemon basil that we got. Um, this next one is going to be a peppermint and uh, ginger mint. I've actually never seen ginger mint before, but I love ginger, I love making Moscow mules, so this really interested me. I know typically um, you're not going to, you're gonna use more of like a, is it like a sweet mint for Moscow mules, but um, I thought that this was really cool, so I was excited to try this one. And then finally, um, and I'm not sure if these are both going to fit in there, but I have two things of chives. Oh my god, this peppermint smells so strong, you guys. It literally smells like one of those little um, round peppermint candies that you get at Christmas time that nobody actually even likes. I don't even know why they make those, but they're a thing. Okay, so my recording randomly stopped on here. I'm not really sure why. Um, but hopefully it didn't stop the weird part. We are just going in with these chives and getting these bitches in here. Oops, <laughs> literally just got soil everywhere. But um, after this, then you guys, we are rounding out to the finish line. Now to get this last piece of the tower on here, we're gonna have to lower this down because either we're gonna have to lower this down or I'm gonna need a ladder. Cause let me tell you, I'm not tall enough to do this. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, disclaimer, once the thing is already built, if you go to lift it up, it is like the leaning tower of Pisa, so be careful. Also, not sure what's going on with this piece of hair, having a little bang moment, but back to the video. Okay, so we have this whole thing built. Um, I just have to put it on the little saucer, and we are good to go. I wish that that was just a joke um, and like a scene for this video, but it wasn't. <laughs> nope, that really happened. So I just finished rebuying everything up again for the second time, vacuumed the entire apartment, um, cleaned off the table. It's a little bit of a disaster in here to say the least, 
But uh, yeah, we finally got it done. So here's the finished product. I am really happy with that, how it turned out. It's way fuller than I was expecting it to look right off the bat. I thought that I would have to let it grow in before it looked big and bushy like this. Um, moral of the story with this product, if you do go out and buy it, I recommend not trying to move more than three layers at once because, well, you see what happened. Would I still recommend this product? At this point, I would say yes. Um, I mean, as you had seen, as you had saw leading up to this, it wasn't really a surprise to me that it was a bad idea to be moving all five layers at one time, um, especially because there's really no locking mechanism on here. But aside from that, I still think that it's a good product. Um, I will do an update on this video. Uh, maybe in a couple months so that you guys can see kind of how the things progressed in there, how the roots looked over time. And uh, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the um, ultimate fail that we had at the end, then please consider giving this video a like because y'all know that your girl was suffering over here with these plants. If you would like to see more uh, questionable content like this in the future, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and leave me a comment on this video letting me know what you thought if you like this content. Kind of content or if you think that I should stick to uh, typical plant videos because let me tell you those are a lot less messy than this one but uh, not nearly as fun to film so there's that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.